I would like us all now to get settled in what we call Writer's Corner. Writer's Corner with Alex Horner, man. Thank you. That sounded lovely, Mark. And this is the part of the show where I've dug up a piece of writing and I'm going to ask the band to try to bring it to life with their musical instruments and their improvising skills. We'll see how it goes. I've dug up a, a village cricket match report today. Um, it's from a game between the Sussex villages of Siddlesham and Duncton. And I think it's best read with musical accompaniment. So let's start with just a bit of sports trumpet, but very brief, four notes. Yes? <laughs> OK, here we go. Last Sunday, over seven people witnessed one of the most memorable cricket matches they will ever remember, probably. Not a genuine article. It was, <laughs> it was already a big day here on the South Coast because Mr Whip, the region's most well-known ice cream van owner, had bought a new ice cream van from Italy which played bespoke ice cream van music for any occasion. Get ready, Ed. And so, on a balmy summer's day, the teams walked out onto the pitch to a background of warm applause and an ice cream van version of the famous cricket music. <laughs> that's lovely. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I had no idea that would sound as haunting as that. <laughs> Siddlesham's first over with the ball was bowled by their octogenarian medium pacer and a Serbic asthmatic who'd never played cricket before, so it took well over an hour to get six lawful balls bowled. <laughs> At which point, Duncan wore an 125 for Nore, all of which were extras, and for those of you who don't know anything about cricket, that's hilarious. <laughs> The second over was a different story. Duncan had signed the former West Indian international Malcolm Marshall on loan, and he took a wicket every ball. Terrified, Siddlesham instantly declared on a respectable 125 for six. At this point, the ice cream van finally stopped tinkling its crickety music. <laughs> Instead, this is you, Mark, the halftime entertainment, and I'm looking forward to this, came courtesy of one of the region's leading female folk singers. <laughs> who played one of her own compositions that drew from traditional Sussex tunes, but with a slight contemporary twist. It was excellent, although you couldn't really hear the words. <laughs> There's a the Sussex bit. <laughs> and there's a contemporary twist. That's wonderful. <laughs> Don't applaud that. Never. Do not encourage that. <laughs> then, at just after 9pm... The Duncton opening pair walked out for their innings. Igor Stinger, the Duncton captain, <laughs> smashed a century of hardly any balls and, as the ice cream van sped out of the ground, chased by a police car. That's all you, if you can. So it's an ice cream van. Is that the police car? <laughs> we can have the Doppler effect. There we go. That's lovely. <laughs> like... <laughs> the home team needed just four runs to win with four days left to get them. It was then that bad lights stopped play, it rained for the next month, and the match was declared a draw. <laughs> Writer's Corner with Alex Horner, man. There we go. Well done, musicians, I thought. Well done today. That's uh, excellent effort. <laughs>